Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. In a world torn between good and evil, a deadly force likes silently plotting their demonic schemes. Cobra is a terrorist organisation that lives on chaos and fear. Developed from the innovative brains at Marvel Comics, extending its tentacles across various domains, from action figure storylines to fascinating animated programmes, Cobra grew becoming an integral part of the G.I. Joe legacy. Prepare to embark on a journey as we plunge into the murky depths of the criminal Cobra Command. In this captivating video, we shall unravel the allure surrounding each of its evil members, delving into their treacherous exploits and dangerous personas. Brace yourself for an exploration into the heart of darkness, where the line between good and evil becomes blurred, and the secrets of Cobra's deadly organization are exposed in all their sinister glory. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Right particles in our possession. We are invincible. Cobra Commander. The mastermind behind the Cobra organization, the elusive leader whose visage remains shrouded in secrecy. Whether concealed by a hood, his piercing eyes ominously peering through, or donning a state-of-the-art battle helmet adorned with cutting-edge security features, his true countenance remains veiled from prying eyes. In the acclaimed Sunbow cartoon series, this concealment served a dual purpose, to mask his inhuman disfigurement and to safeguard the revelation that he hailed from a race of reptilian serpent beings known as Cobra La. He's regarded as the epitome of peril, for his evil charisma possesses the power to enthrall and draw followers to his chaotic cause. From the original 1980s G.I. Joe, a real American hero series, to subsequent adaptations, his influence extends to the animated feature film G.I. Joe the Movie, where his nefarious plans reach new heights. In this pivotal installment, he orchestrates a plot to harness the power of the ancient serpent cult, Cobra La, to unleash destruction upon the world. Across various animated iterations and adaptations, Cobra Commander's character thrives, providing a consistent source of opposition and conflict for the valiant G.I. Joe team. Hold it, Baroness! I said hold it! <laughs> Baroness, a femme fatale whose origins lie in the gilded halls of European aristocracy. Enter Baroness Anastasia de Cobre, a captivating and complex character whose path to infamy was paved with tragedy. Across various iterations, her transformation into a terrorism-tinged existence was catalyzed by the heartbreaking loss of her brother, an altruistic soul who met a tragic end while held captive as valiant army rangers attempted a daring rescue. In the beloved Marvel comic Snake Eyes, a crucial member of the G.I. Joe team found himself caught up in the complicated emotions surrounding Baroness's grieving heart. Holding him accountable for her brother's demise, she became consumed by a thirst for vengeance. Elevated to a position of prominence within the Cobra ranks, the Baroness assumed the role of Director of Intelligence, an influential position that granted her access to the darkest secrets and most classified information. Her razor-sharp intellect and cunning prowess made her an indispensable asset, as she tirelessly worked to further the sinister objectives of the organization. But behind the veil of darkness, a forbidden romance blossomed, defying the boundaries of loyalty and logic. Destro, a formidable presence and high-ranking member of Cobra, found solace and companionship within the arms of the Baroness. In this intricate tapestry of love, loss and loyalty, the Baroness emerges as a complex figure, a master manipulator driven by a desire for vengeance, yet vulnerable to the entanglements of the heart. Zaymart is reacting to the experience of his twin Tomax. There's a psychic bond between them. Destro. From the mist-covered highlands of Scotland emerges a figure whose presence commands attention. The indomitable James McCullen Destro the 24th, known simply as Destro. Wearing a metal mask, he's a mysterious figure wrapped in secrecy, keeping his face hidden as his deeds communicate loudly. In the animated realm, the remarkable articulation of his mask, a testament to advanced nanotechnology and liquid metal, adds an uncanny depth to his character's mystique. A key player within the treacherous world of Cobra, Destro occupies a unique position as a dangerous arms dealer with the nefarious organization serving as his most prized client. As the hereditary leader of the military armaments research syndicate, aptly known as Mars, he wields unparalleled influence, masterfully orchestrating conflicts to ignite the flames of demand for his deadly weaponry. Using his personal army, the Iron Grenadiers, he takes pleasure in the turmoil he creates, profiting from selling weapons to all factions involved in conflicts, disregarding notions of loyalty and ethics. While Destro's role in G.I. Joe the movie is relatively minor, his allegiance takes a surprising turn. 
Union, he offers his loyalty to Golobulus and Cobra La, swiftly turning against Cobra Commander once again. In the climactic battle between the Joes and the ancient civilization of Cobra La, Destro is seen actively engaged in combat. In the DC G.I. Joe miniseries Operation Dragonfire, Destro returns as Serpentor's trusted right-hand man, seemingly having survived the events of the movie. Donning a striking gold mask and an imposing Iron Grenadier uniform with a commanding cape, he exudes an air of regal authority. We got here is a couple of GI jungle rats. Copperhead, emerging from the murky depths of the Florida Everglades, a figure adept at navigating swamps and commanding the air driver swamp vehicle stands tall. Copperhead, a native of these untamed lands. His intimate knowledge of the area suggests a deep-rooted connection to the Everglades, where he honed his skills and embraced the thrill of high-stakes races in far-flung locations such as Monaco and Japan, plying the waters in lightning-fast speedboats. However, as with many who dance on the edge of danger, Copperhead's Achilles' heel lies in gambling. Initially drawn into this peril world by placing bets on his own races, he found himself ensnared in a web of mounting debts. Desperate to repay what he owed, he sold his services to the Cobra, embracing a life of treachery and danger. Rumors circulated that Cobra, recognizing the value of Copperhead's combat prowess and piloting skills, took it upon themselves to settle his debts, ensuring his loyalty. In the illustrious realm of the Sunbow G.I. Joe cartoon, Copperhead emerges from the depths of animated adventures, making his gripping debut in the thrilling first season episode titled Jungle Trap. Continuing his animated conquests, Copperhead resurfaces within the DIC G.I. Joe cartoon. This new iteration of Copperhead finds himself entangled in the epic Operation Dragonfire miniseries. In this gripping tale, Copperhead aligns himself with the Cobra Commander and assumes the role of a commanding officer for the fearsome Python Patrol, a division within the Cobra ranks. Storm Shadow Storm Shadow emerges as an interesting character covered in a legacy that spans generations. He worked both as an assassin as well as a bodyguard to the Cobra Commander, born Thomas S. Arashikage. Storm Shadow's very name carries the weight of his ancestry, with Arashi meaning storm and Kage symbolizing shadow in Japanese. Storm Shadow's journey begins in the U.S. Army Special Operations Group, where he serves alongside the legendary Snake Eyes. In a testament to their intertwined destinies, Storm Shadow extends a fateful invitation to Snake Eyes, inviting him to train as a ninja within his own family in Japan. From that point forward, their relationship becomes a complex vortex of shifting dynamics, fearing from bitter enemies to unwavering allies who would lay down their lives for one another. His mastery of multiple martial arts disciplines has earned him the distinction of an eighth-degree black belt, embodying physical and mental strength. He possesses remarkable speed, moving like a blur-like swiftness that leaves his opponents in awe. His expertise extends to an array of weapons, including the longbow, samurai sword, throwing stars, and nunchaku sticks, making him a lethal opponent in any confrontation. While the Sunbow cartoon series missed delving into the intricate relationship between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, Storm Shadow found himself engaged in intense battles with G.I. Joe, members such as Spirit and Quick Kick, creating enthralling conflicts that resonated with fans. As a master ninja, his presence commands respect, leaving an unforgettable mark on the hearts and minds of fans. This will bring them running. Zartan, a master of deception and disguise. As a highly skilled mercenary, Zartan's services were frequently enlisted by none other than the evil Cobra commander himself. While his true origins remain darker than a black hole, it's rumored that he may have undergone training at the esteemed European Military Academy, St. Cyr adding an air of sophistication to his mysterious persona. Zartan possesses a remarkable ability to manipulate his own skin color, seamlessly adapting to any environment like a chameleon. This uncanny skill grants him the power to blend effortlessly into his surroundings. Zartan is a practitioner of esoteric martial arts, delving into the realm of mysticism to enhance his combat prowess. Furthermore, Zartan's linguistic aptitude spans over 20 languages and dialects, enabling him to infiltrate any culture or society seamlessly. Together with his notorious gang of miscreants known as the Dreadnoughts, Zartan employs an array of deceptive techniques, including holographic technology, to transform their appearances and assume false identities. With his multifaceted skills, mysterious past, and network of intriguing relationships, Zartan stands as a symbol of both terror and fascination, leaving a mark on the history of the G.I. Joe universe. No need to land. We just step out! Tomax and Xamar meet the duo 
Tomax and Xarmat, esteemed co-leaders of Cobra's elite troops, the Crimson Guard. The brothers embarked on a journey through various chapters of life. However, their true calling revealed itself when they transitioned into the realm of international terrorism, realizing that their remarkable skill set was better suited for the stealthy world of Cobra. Xarmat and Tomax excel in the arts of infiltration, espionage, sabotage, propaganda, and even corporate law. They possess a duality that is as captivating as it is chilling. In the corporate world, Xarmat and Tomax don formal attire and deftly navigate the intricacies of the business. Xarmat and Tomax are mirror images of each other, a living reflection of their intertwined destinies. Tomax's hair is gracefully parted on the right side, while Xarmat's cascades to the left. Their uniforms bear a subtle inversion of piping, a testament to their synchrony. Even their names are perfect mirror images, with Xarmat being Tomax when read through a looking glass. The only discernible distinction lies in a scar adorning Xarmat's right cheek, absent on his twin brother's visage. However, the depth of their connection transcends the physical realm. They share an extraordinary empathic bond, known as the Corsican Syndrome, a phenomenon common among identical twins. Their minds meld seamlessly, enabling wordless communication and the uncanny ability to finish each other's sentences. Yet, this profound connection comes with its own set of challenges as they also bear the burden of feeling each other's pain. Then start by deciding where you want to be buried. Serpento. Serpentor, the invincible Cobra Emperor, embodies the top of leadership within the ranks of Cobra. Crafted to perfection under the guidance of Dr. Mindbender, Serpentor's creation was a testament to scientific mastery and ambition. Joined by Destro, they embarked on a quest through history, delving into the sacred tombs of legendary leaders. Their mission? To extract minuscule fragments of DNA from revered figures of the past. From the ancient genetic blueprints, Serpentor emerged, a clone imbued with the collective brilliance and essence of the greatest conquerors and strategist to have ever walked the earth. His DNA mosaic boasted the genius of Napoleon, the mercilessness of Julius Caesar, the audacity of Hannibal, and the cunning of Attila the Hun. Serpentor became the embodiment of a perfect leader, a brilliant tactician, and a master of political intrigue. Serpentor made his explosive debut in the five-part G.I. Joe episode, Arise, Serpentor, Arise. Here, the animated version of Serpentor emerged as the superior and supreme leader of Cobra, product of Dr. Mindbender's groundbreaking breakthroughs in cloning research. In the epic G.I. Joe the movie, Serpentor's destiny intertwines with that of Cobra La when he's contacted by Pythona, an emissary hailing from the ancient culture. This encounter sets in motion a chain of events that would challenge the very foundation of Cobra's power structure. Serpentor's enigmatic presence also reverberates through the DIC-produced G.I. Joe miniseries G.I. Joe Operation Dragonfire. With a reorganization, Organized Cobra Force by his side, including the likes of Destro, Baroness, Scoop, Sarana, and Copperhead. Serpentor aims to harness the mystical and mythical powers known as Dragonfire. Serpentor's journey embodies the relentless pursuit of power, the clash of forces, and the ongoing saga of G.I. Joe as the Cobra Emperor. Firefly. Firefly, the elusive mercenary, is a valued operative within the ranks of the Cobra organization. His true identity remains hidden, even to Cobra Commander himself. No one knows his given name or what he truly looks like, adding an air of intrigue to his persona. Firefly's reputation precedes him, as he's renowned for his expertise as a ninja master, a saboteur, and an unparalleled authority in handling both NATO and Warsaw packed explosives and detonators. When it comes to executing acts of sabotage, Firefly is an artist. He possesses an innate understanding understanding of the precise placement required for maximum destruction. His meticulous attention to detail ensures that his charges will unleash devastation with utmost efficiency. Firefly services come at a steep price, paid into a confidential Swiss bank account. Firefly often collaborates with Blackout and Munitia as part of the notorious HISS hierarchy of infiltration, stealth, and sabotage team. Together, they form a deadly trio, specializing in covert operations and wreaking havoc on Cobra's enemies. Fans of the Sunbow Marvel G.I. Joe cartoon were introduced to Firefly in the gripping Revenge of Cobra miniseries. During the initial season of the series, Firefly consistently upheld his position as a skilled saboteur and a hired gun, making a significant impact on numerous missions and engagements. Throughout the first season of the series, Firefly kept his role as a saboteur and mercenary, leaving his mark on various missions and encounters. He also made a brief appearance in G.I. Joe the movie, showcasing his skills in a limited capacity. However, with the transition of the cartoon's production from Sunbow Marvel to DIC Entertainment, Firefly's presence on unfortunately dwindled, and he made no further appearances in the series. Whether operating alone or as part of a team, his skills as a saboteur and mercenary leave a lasting impact on the G.I. Joe universe. Slice 
Slice, a skilled and lethal ninja swordsman, aligns himself with the ranks of Cobra, showcasing his mastery of the blade. Believed to be a renegade from the renowned Arashikage clan, Slice has cemented his position as Cobra's supreme swordsman. While he may lack the finesse and subtlety often associated with ninjas, Slice compensates with sheer brute strength and a relentless approach to combat. His swordsmanship technique mimics the swift and venomous strikes of scorpions, making him a killer opponent on the battlefield. In his typical attire, Slice dons a distinctive Uwagi, adorned with Cobra's emblem over traditional ninja garbs, embodying his allegiance to the Cobra organization. He also exhibits a fondness for operating the specialized vehicle known as the Cobra Parasite, which further enhances his combat capabilities. Slice makes his notable appearance in the DIC G.I. Joe episode titled The Sword, where he's joined by his partner Dice and the Night Creeper leader. However, in an unfortunate mix-up, Slice is mistakenly referred to as Dice, while Dice is addressed as Slice. This confusion adds an intriguing twist to their characters, blurring out their identities. Furthermore, Slice makes an appearance in the movie G.I. Joe, Valor vs. Venom, sporting a different appearance from his previous depiction. Accompanying him is a fellow ninja named Slash, forming a deadly duo of martial prowess. As Cobra's preeminent swordsman, he brings a unique style and skills to the battlefield, making him a popular character within the ongoing struggle between Cobra and the G.I. Joe team. Overkill. He's a double dose of technological terror. Behold, the name Overkill is shared by two distinct figures in G.I. Joe lore. Both individuals hold the prestigious title of leader among the formidable Bats, those fearsome battle android troopers commanded by the ruthless Cobra organization. Let's unravel the tale of these extraordinary beings. The genesis of Overkill begins with the first version, an audacious experiment birthed as a prototype of the Bat program. Powered by an advanced computer system and armed with tactical logic programs, this Overkill proved too costly for mass production in the eyes of Cobra. Yet, despite being a soulless automaton, this extraordinary creation is often referred to in masculine terms. In the year 2003, a new incarnation of Overkill emerged, seizing the spotlight in the G.I. Joe vs. Cobra series. This version is a fusion of man and machine, a cyborg entity. Curiously, the file card spelt his name as Overkill, distinguishing it from the combined form found in news releases and Valor vs. Venom credits where Overkill takes precedence. Really care to test the truth of that statement, Commander? Dr. Mindbender, a scientist whose allegiance lies with the nefarious Cobra organization. Once in a bygone era, Dr. Bender was a peaceful orthodontist, committed to relieving dental suffering through his innovative machine, harnessing the power of electric brainwave stimulation. Alas, fate dealt him a cruel hand when he dared test his creation upon himself, triggering a cataclysmic malfunction that warped his once virtuous nature into one consumed by malice, deception, and an insane vanity. Cast adrift from his dental practice, Dr. Mindbender embraced the dark allure of Cobra, dedicating every waking moment to honing his sinister art of digital brain scrambling. Within the treacherous ranks of Cobra, he emerged as a master of mind control and interrogation, his scientific prowess extending beyond the realms of psychology to encompass genetics, cloning, dentistry, and even cybernetics. Dr. Mindbender made his memorable debut in the G.I. Joe episode, No Place Like Springfield, Part 2, assuming the esteemed positions of Cobra as chief interrogator and science officer. Mindbender unwittingly became an instrument of greater forces at play. However, in the realm of G.I. Joe, Sigma-6, Dr. Mindbender's presence was notably absent as Overkill seized the mantle of Cobra's chief scientist. Big Boa. Prepare to encounter the dangerous figure known as Big Boa, an unbeatable force within the ranks of the Cobra organization. With an unwavering commitment to discipline and a relentless drive to mold Cobra troops into a fearsome fighting force, Big Boa reigns as a strict and demanding taskmaster. Clad in an intimidating ensemble that includes menacing boxing gloves and a fearsome helmet, he strikes an imposing figure on the training grounds. Throughout both the Marvel and IDW iterations, Big Boa emerges as a paragon of unyielding toughness, seldom bested by his students. His training sessions are grueling affairs, leaving his charges battered and bruised, yet undeniably hardened and ready for battle. His unwavering dedication to his craft remains a constant, although slight variations in his physical appearance have occurred over time. Within the Marvel series, Big Boa dons a distinctive mask and boxing gloves, his imposing figure forever bare-chested, symbolizing his unyielding resolve and the raw power he possesses. In the limited stint featured in IDW's G.R. Joe Cobra Vol. 2, Big Boa adopts a sleek all-black attire, accentuated by a sturdy steel brace encircling his jaw. This brace serves as both a visual reminder of his enduring resilience and a practical support following a past injury that left his jaw broken. Consume partner, together we have mischief to make. 
Cesspool. Meet the sinister figure Cesspool, a man with a dark past and a twisted agenda. Once a prominent chief executive officer of a sprawling multinational corporation, Cesspool's domain encompassed vast holdings in the oil, chemical, and manufacturing industries. In an ill-fated attempt to appease environmental groups, he led them on a tour of one of his chemical plants, where an accidental encounter with toxic waste left him horribly disfigured, forever altering the course of his life. Driven by a thirst for vengeance and armed with his extensive knowledge of illicit dealings and corporate deception, Cesspool turned his back on society and sought refuge within the nefarious Cobra organization. There, he channeled his expertise into the creation of a potent weapon known as Plasma Tox, coupled with a portable dispersal system. Secretly plotting and planning, he sought to develop an additive capable of exerting control over those exposed to it. Driven by a deep-seated loathing for the world that had rejected him, Cesspool harbored a chilling desire to create an army of obedient zombie vipers. Bent on exacting his revenge and plunging the world into a state of darkness and decay, Okay. Fueled by his inner ugliness and an unwavering determination, Cesspool's sinister proclamation echoed through the shadows, promising to transform the world into a reflection of his own twisted nature. Crystal Ball Crystal Ball is the hypnotic manipulator within the ranks of Cobra. Born as the seventh son of a seventh son, his lineage traces back to a Romanian father with rumored psychic abilities and an American mother hailing from the quiet town of Bangor, Maine. According to folklore, those born as the seventh son of the seventh son possess extraordinary telepathic powers. A diligent investigation led by the astute psych out unearthed an intriguing alternative theory. It revealed a connection between Crystal Ball and a stage hypnotist known as Trance Master. This figure had once mastered masqueraded as an encyclopedia salesman in the peaceful corners of Maine for embarking on a journey across the globe, seeking to expand his knowledge of hypnotic techniques. The intertwining of Crystal Ball's heritage and his encounter with the mesmerizing trance master suggests a more complex narrative behind his hypnotic powers. Whether his abilities are rooted in ancient lineage or acquired through the study of hypnotism, one thing remains certain. Crystal Ball possesses a profound understanding of the human mind and wields it as a powerful tool within Cobra's sinister operations. Major Blood. Meet Major Sebastian Blood, a ruthless mercenary who's found a home within the Cobra. Trained by the elite Australian Special Air Service, he honed his skills and served with distinction in Southeast Asia. Blood's transition into the realm of a mercenary was a natural progression. Utilizing his expertise as a military advisor, he lent his talents to various troubled nations, sowing the seeds of terror and chaos under the guise of offering counsel. His ruthless actions throughout Europe earned him infamy, leading to his status as a wanted man on three continents. Proficient in handling a wide array of small arms from both NATO and Warsaw Pact arsenals, his weapons qualification as a sharpshooter speaks volumes of his deadly accuracy. His versatility extends to the realm of explosives, where he demonstrates a mastery of plastic compositions and the utilization of long-range sniper rifles. Blood's arsenal expands further to include unconventional tools of mayhem, ranging from garrots and blunt instruments to poisoned ice picks and even the infamous Saturday Night Specials. However, amidst his ruthless pursuits, Major Blood harbors a peculiar pastime, writing notorious Notoriously bad poetry, showcasing a glimpse into the complex depths of his twisted psyche. With his expertise and lethal capabilities, Major Blood stands as a lethal asset within the Cobra organization. Metalhead. A distinctive member of the Iron Grenadiers and a character not to be confused with Metalhead from G.I. Joe Extreme. Within the second G.I. Joe animated series produced by DIC Entertainment, Metalhead made his mark as a peculiar and slightly unhinged individual. This personality was portrayed through his childlike demeanor and a penchant for indiscriminate destruction, often yelling his actions with an unruly BANG. As he unleashed a barrage of weapons upon his surroundings, Metalhead's role primarily served as a source of comic relief much to the chagrin of Cobra Commander. His unpredictable nature and lack of restraint made him a constant frustration for his commanding officer. During the first season, Metalhead frequently found himself partnered with the dreadnought known as Norderhide, leading to their misadventures being chronicled in numerous episodes. Despite his outlandish behavior, Metalhead showcased a vulnerable side, with his grandmother standing as a central figure in his life. The disappointment she expressed in his chosen path became a significant weakness for Metalhead, adding depth to his character. The episodes Granny Dearest and Metalhead's Reunion offered glimpses into the unique dynamic between Metalhead and his grandmother, highlighting the conflict between his desire for acceptance and his chaotic tendencies. While Metalhead may have provided moments of levity within the G.R. Joe series, his presence and unpredictable actions were not to be underestimated. Subject number one is definitely showing signs of infection. 
Dr. Venom, an accomplished inventor and the pioneering scientist behind Cobra's infamous brainwave scanner. As the first scientist to lend his expertise to the nefarious organization, Dr. Venom's contributions to Cobra's arsenal are as ingenious as they are wrongful. His most notable creation, the brainwave scanner, exemplifies his diabolical brilliance. In a turn of events, Dr. Venom seizes the opportunity to showcase the power of his sinister device when the Baroness successfully captures a few Joes, delivering them into the clutches of Cobra headquarters. The brainwave scanner becomes the instrument through which their minds are invaded and manipulated, unleashing the full extent of Dr. Venom's depravity. Throughout the G.I. Joe Renegade series, Dr. Venom's ominous presence is felt, particularly in the episode aptly titled The Anaconda Strain. It's here that we're introduced to Dr. Archibald Monev, a scientist affiliated with Cobra Industries who collaborates with Dr. Kurt Schnur on the development of the treacherous Anaconda Strain virus. However, unbeknownst to his colleague, Dr. Venom secretly infects Dr. Schnur, effectively removing him as an obstacle to Cobra's sinister plans to release the deadly virus upon the populace. Moreover, he cunningly ensures the distribution of the antidote solely under Cobra's control. Roll. Scrap Iron, a meticulous and detail-oriented anti-armor specialist of Cobra. With an unwavering disdain for imperfection in any shape or form, Scrap Iron brings a methodical approach to his role within the organization. Renowned as a master of tank destruction, he possesses a unique skill set that makes him a worthy enemy on the battlefield. Before joining Cobra, Scrap Iron served as a product designer at Destro's prestigious armaments company. His responsibilities included conducting rigorous field tests on all new armor-piercing munitions and sub-munitions. His expertise lies in the realm of remote-launched, laser-guided, rocket-propelled, piezoelectric-fused anti-tank weapons, which he employs with deadly precision. Scrap Iron's introduction to the world of G.I. Joe came in the Sunbow animated series specifically in the gripping Revenge of Cobra miniseries. He later played a significant role in the captivating Arise, Serpentor, Arise miniseries, where he showcased his ingenuity as the brilliant mind behind the creation of the iconic Bat, Battle Android Trooper. It's revealed that he's been abducting war veterans, subjecting them to brainwashing techniques while utilizing their rage to test the capabilities of new exo-armors. With his expertise in weaponry and unwavering commitment to Cobra's cause, Scrap Iron remains a key asset to the organization. Blackout. Meet Thomas C. Stahl, operating under the codename Blackout. Hailing from Cincinnati, Ohio, he's the brother of esteemed G.I. Joe members Barrel Roll and Bomb Strike. Despite being born into a family deeply connected to the world of G.I. Joe, Blackout's path diverged when he failed his psychological examination, leading to his exclusion from the team. Consumed by bitterness and resentment, he found solace in the arms of the Cobra organization, where he honed his skills as a skilled sniper. There are whispers that Blackout's involvement in his sister Bomb Strike's disappearance may have played a role in his rejection from the G.I. Joe ranks. Fueled by a sense of injustice, he cast his lot with Cobra, determined to prove his worth and seek revenge against those who denied him a place among their ranks. In the shadows, Blackout forms a deadly trio known as Hiss, alongside Firefly and the fierce Munitia. Blackout first emerged as an action figure in 2003. His affiliation with Cobra became even more pronounced in the G.I. Joe America's Elite series, where he was handpicked to serve as a member of the elite Plague Troopers. With his expert marksmanship and unwavering determination, Blackout embodied is the dark side of warfare. Interrogator The Interrogator made his presence known within the pages of the Devil's Due G.I. Joe comics. His name first surfaced in issue 30 of the series when Cobra Commander issued an order to capture the infiltrator Barrel Roll and deliver him to the skilled Interrogator. In his first physical appearance, Interrogator took part in a daring raid on a hospital aiming to abduct the child of Destro and the Baroness. This audacious mission served as a test, evaluating interrogator's capabilities and those of his fellow operatives for potential inclusion in the elite squad known as the Plague. As the World War III storyline unfolded, interrogator and his comrades from the Plague embarked on a series of global missions, eliminating any opposition that dared to challenge the might of Cobra. Their endeavors included a heated battle with the G.I. Joe team in the Middle East. Ultimately, interrogator found himself thrust into the climactic final battle between the forces of G.I. Joe and Cobra, deep within a concealed base nestled amidst the Appalachian Mountains. In this momentous confrontation, he played his part, standing alongside his fellow Cobra operatives as the fate of nations hung in the balance. Headman. Headman, a ruthless and cunning criminal mastermind, rose to power as a drug kingpin at the helm of the infamous Headhunters organization. His criminal journey began with petty crimes, preying on vulnerable targets such as elderly women for their social security checks. As his ambition grew, he escalated his activities to include brazen convenience store robberies. During a stint in prison, Headman seized the opportunity to acquire knowledge and skills in the illicit drug trade. Armed with this newfound expertise, he embarked on a path of creating a drug empire that adhered to the strict principles of a 
paramilitary organization. The headhunters operated with unwavering discipline, following a respected chain of command that ensured their dominance over the criminal underworld. Headman's calculated approach to criminal enterprise proved highly successful, as many of his competitors faltered and crumbled under the weight of his ruthless tactics. However, he didn't limit himself to drug trafficking alone. Recognizing the potential for even greater profits, Headman expanded his illicit ventures, delving into the theft of weapon plans and priceless art treasures. This expansion allowed him to tap into wider profit possibilities and solidify his position as a deadly force in the criminal landscape. Dr. Biggles Jones Dr. Biggles Jones, a brilliant scientist and inventor, made her first appearance in G.I. Joe, a real American hero, 135, where her scientific facility fell under attack by the ruthless Night Creepers mercenaries. Tragically, the assault resulted in the loss of many lives, except for Dr. Biggles Jones and the railgun she developed. Unexpectedly, the alien robot known as Megatron arrived at the scene and struck a deal with Cobra Commander. In exchange for advanced Cybertronian technology, Megatron sought a redesigned body and the powerful railgun in Cobra's possession. Dr. Biggles Jones was tasked with fulfilling Megatron's request, leading to the creation of his shoulder-mounted electromagnetic railgun and other enhancements that transformed him into a tank-based robot. As the collaboration between Cobra and Megatron progressed, Dr. Biggles Jones grew increasingly uncomfortable with the dangerous alliance and the potential consequences. However, her concerns were ignored, and Cobra ultimately betrayed her by offering her as part of their deal with Megatron. Megatron, in his quest for power, arranged to freeze Dr. Biggles Jones's brain for transportation to his home planet of Cybertron. But it was Scarlet, driven by a debt owed to Dr. Biggles Jones for saving her life, who valiantly confronted Megatron to rescue the scientist. In a daring act of bravery, Scarlet thwarted Megatron's plans and ensured Dr. Biggles Jones's safety. Her contributions to advanced weaponry and her role in the conflict between G.I. Joe and Cobra leave a lasting impact on the fans. Raptor Raptor, the falconer and member of Cobra, has a unique and fascinating background. Originally a yuppie tax consultant, he developed a passion for falconry as a hobby. His obsession with the avian blood sport grew and he began breeding larger and stronger birds, equipping them with steel-tipped talons to pursue more lucrative prey. After being caught poaching on a Cobra mink ranch by Destro, Raptor found himself joining the ranks of Cobra. He saw an opportunity to use his skills in developing a bird of prey capable of attacking G.I. Joes. Raptor formed a deep bond with his feathered companions and went to great lengths to put them at ease, even adopting a bird-like appearance in his attire. In addition to his service to Cobra, Raptor supplemented his income by training his falcons to steal jewels and other valuable items. His knowledge about the replacement of the original Cobra commander by Fred Seven was a closely guarded secret, which he shared with Dr. Mindbender. However, Raptor's involvement with Cobra commander would ultimately prove fatal. After Cobra commander's return to Cobra Island, Raptor and several of his enemies were buried in a landlocked freighter on the island Tragically, Raptor succumbed to botulism from eating tainted food, resulting in his demise. Crocmaster Crocmaster, a member of Cobra and Reptile Hunter, has a unique background that intertwines his past as an alligator wrestler and burglar alarm salesman. Seeking to capitalize on the use of alligators for home security, he founded Guard Gators Inc with the intention of commercializing their potential. His association with Cobra led him to stock the intricate network of canals and waterways on Cobra Island with highly aggressive and fast man-eating crocodiles. Crocmaster deliberately conditioned these reptiles to be hostile and psychotic, making them effective assets for Cobra's operations. Crocmaster showcases his expertise in handling and training reptiles. His skill set and knowledge of reptilian behavior make him a valuable asset to Cobra, utilizing his reptile companions as both a form of defense and as tools for intimidation. His ability to control and command these deadly creatures makes him a strangely fatal foe for the G.I. Joe team. Razor Claw Razor Claw is an intriguing character within the Cobra organization, known for leading the fearsome Cobra Razor Troopers. His origins and transformation into a Cobra Feral Berserker are covered in mystery. Following the procedure, he experienced a primal urge to tear apart anything in his path. Trained by renegade ninjas, Razor Claw has honed his skills in vicious and sneaky tactics that have been deemed forbidden by many traditional ninja clans for centuries. His training emphasizes unleashing the predatory instincts ingrained within him. Razor Claw's abilities are amplified by the infusion of tiger DNA, allowing him to stalk and capture his targets with the aid of his retractable claws. As the leader of the Cobra Razor Troopers, Razor Claw commands a force of elite soldiers who possess similar feral attributes and enhanced combat capabilities. Together, they form a formidable unit within Cobra, utilizing their primal ferocity and specialized tactics to carry out missions and strike fear into the hearts of their enemies. His proficiency in close quarters combat, agility, and predatory instincts make him a relentless and wild opponent on the battlefield. 
Overlord. Overlord, also known as Mikhail Dorenko, is a complex character within the G.I. Joe universe. While his background remains somewhat hidden, it's believed that he may have once been a member of the infamous Crimson Guard. However, he eventually rose to prominence within Cobra and seized control of the organization. Under the guise of advocating traditional Cobra values, Overlord cunningly masked his true intentions, which revolved around his personal thirst for power. During his reign, he orchestrated various events that furthered his grip on authority within Cobra. One of Overlord's most significant and shocking acts was the murder of Chuckles, a member of the G.I. Joe team on the shores of Cobra Island. This act served as an example of his ruthlessness and disregard for human life. Shortly after this event, Skidmark and Duke attempted to apprehend Overlord, but a helicopter crash intervened, allowing him to escape. His actions, including the murder of Chuckles and his subsequent attempts to eliminate key G.I. Joe members, cemented his place as a dangerous adversary. General Mayhem General Mayhem is a daunting character within the G.I. Joe universe. He's a former Spetsnaz general who went AWOL, absent without leave, and later resurfaced as the new general of the Iron Grenadiers, working alongside Destro. Despite his seemingly chaotic and unorganized plans, General Mayhem possesses a strategic mind that enables him to bring his schemes together and achieve victory. There's been speculation and rumors suggesting that General Mayhem and General Iron Bear, the leader of the October Guard, are the same character. However, it's important to note that these rumors are not substantiated. David S. Lane, under his alias Commander Lane on the official G.I. Joe Club forum, clarified that the information suggesting their identity as the same character is false. While General Mayhem's true identity and background remain mysterious, his role as a key figure within the Iron Grenadiers and his strategic prowess make him a deadly G.I. Joe opponent. Ghost Bear Ghost Bear, also known as Jesse Quinn Jr., is a character within the G.I. Joe universe. He's the son of Tracker Quinn, a skilled hunter and tracker. Ghost Bear was born in an Inuit village located on the Russian side of the Bering Strait. Growing up in a harsh environment, he learned the skills of hunting and tracking in the most unforgiving conditions on Earth. Tragedy struck when Ghost Bear's father, Tracker Quinn, was killed during a mission with G.I. Joe at the hands of the Cobra organization. This event deeply affected Ghost Bear, leading him to harbor a grudge against the G.I. Joe team, including the iconic character Snake Eyes. Seeking revenge and driven by his desire to settle the score, Ghost Bear joined the Cobra organization. Ghost Bear's story unfolds in the Devil's Due series G.I. Joe, America's Elite, particularly during the World War III storyline. As the Joes intensify their efforts to eliminate every member of Cobra they can find, Ghost Bear becomes a target. The conflict between Ghost Bear and the G.I. Joe team adds tension and further layers to the ongoing narrative of the G.I. Joe universe. Gristle Gristle, also known as Danimal J. Rogers, is a character in the G.I. Joe universe and serves as Cobra's urban crime commander. He was born in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Gristle is known for his lack of personal hygiene and often wears sunglasses to hide his bloodshot eyes possibly suggesting a history of drug or alcohol abuse. Prior to joining Cobra, Gristle underwent extensive training to become a member of the group known as the Headhunters. He also worked as a trusted lieutenant to various crime lords who operated illegal warehouses disguised as legitimate comedy clubs. Gristle eventually formed his own gang and found his way into Cobra's ranks, aligning himself with the organization. When confronted by G.I. Joe, Gristle admits to feeling crazy during their pursuits, implying a certain level of instability or reckless behavior on his part. His role as Cobra's urban crime commander likely involves overseeing and coordinating criminal activities in urban areas, leveraging his knowledge and connections within the criminal underworld. He represents the criminal elements that Cobra recruits and utilizes in their operations. Rip it. Rip it? whose real name is Fred T. Booth III, is a character in the G.I. Joe universe and serves as the commander of Cobra's Hiss Tank Division. He appears in the Devil's Due G.I. Joe comics, specifically in the one-shot issue titled Special Missions, The Enemy. In this comic, Rippet plays a role in a raid on a hospital with the objective of kidnapping the baby of the Baroness. Despite his position within Cobra, Rippet expresses doubts about the mission, indicating a moral conflict or hesitation to carry out such an operation. Unfortunately, his doubts prove to be his downfall. Rippet is ultimately killed by his superiors, likely as a consequence of his dissent or perceived weakness. This serves as a reminder of the ruthless nature of Cobra and the consequences faced by those who question or oppose the organization's objectives. Rippet's character provides insight into the internal dynamics of Cobra and the consequences faced by its members who deviate from their assigned roles or show signs of doubt. His story highlights the high stakes and dangerous nature of the G.I. Joe universe, where even Cobra members are not exempt from their organization's harsh disciplinary measures. Wraith 
Wraith, also known as Charles Halifax, is depicted as a mercenary driven by a desire to fight, create chaos, and kill rather than be motivated by a monetary gain. Wraith possesses a stolen stealth assault suit, which grants him near invisibility. However, if he moves too quickly, an outline of Wraith can be seen, although by that point, he's typically already in close proximity to his target. In the Devil's Due G.I. Joe continuity, both G.I. Joe and Cobra sought to recruit Wraith due to his exceptional spy and combat skills. However, it was Destro who understood Halifax's true nature and his affinity for chaos and destruction. Ultimately, Wraith meets his demise at the hands of the Baroness, who seeks revenge against those who have wronged her in the past. Following Wraith's death, the stealth suit he possessed falls into the hands of the Red Shadows, reportedly the original designers of the suit. This suggests that the technology Wraith utilized had origins predating his acquisition of it. Venomous Maximus In a nefarious plot, Cobra managed to apprehend General Hawk, a renowned military leader, and subjected him to a diabolical transformation. Through a process of mutation, they transformed him into the fearsome villain known as Venomous Maximus, who now stood at the helm of Cobra's V troops. Venomous Maximus emerged as a force to be feared, displaying extraordinary power and abilities. However, his newfound might came at a cost, as he proved to be challenging to control. His instincts, shaped by the fusion of reptilian focus, insect-like drive, and mammalian bloodlust fueled a relentless thirst for power and dominance. His insect drive granted him an insatiable desire to conquer and expand his influence, while his mammalian bloodlust imbued him with a primal ferocity in battle. Sky Creeper Sky Creeper, the notorious criminal, assumed the role of the Cobra Air Recon Leader, utilizing his aerial expertise to serve the sinister organization. Exploiting his skills, Sky Creeper embarked on a criminal career, targeting patrons of rooftop restaurants and making swift getaways with the aid of his trusty gliders. Fate took an unexpected turn for Sky Creeper when he found himself incarcerated. It was during his time behind bars that he caught the attention of a member of the notorious gang known as the Dreadnoks. Recognizing his potential, they extended an offer to join the ranks of Cobra, an offer he couldn't refuse. Seizing the opportunity for a fresh start and a chance at even greater criminal exploits, Sky Creeper eagerly aligned himself with the forces of Cobra. In his new role, Sky Creeper utilized his exceptional piloting skills to assemble an air recon unit known as the Night Vultures. As the commanding officer of this covert squadron, he orchestrated covert operations and aerial surveillance missions to further Cobra's nefarious agenda. However, doubts about his allegiance and the morality of his actions began to plague Sky Creeper. Tragically, his hesitation and dissent were met with severe consequences. Sky Creeper fell victim to the ruthless nature of his superiors, meeting his untimely demise at their hands. Shadow Strike Meet Shadow Strike, the ninja with a mission. With skills sharper than a samurai sword and a loyalty as twisted as a pretzel, Shadow Strike is considered to be the perfect candidate for infiltrating the Arashi Kage clan. His mission? To destroy it from the inside when he's on a mission under the orders of the Cobra Commander in secret. And if you think that's sneaky, just wait until you hear about his training process. Under the tutelage of Storm Shadow, Shadow Strike continued to hone his ninja skills, but while he may have been a student on paper, he was also a spy in practice. Shadow Strike kept a watchful eye on Storm Shadow's every move, reporting back to Cobra Commander with any juicy intel he could get his hands on. Talk about multitasking. But like any lone wolf, Shadow Strike had his weaknesses. He preferred to operate as a single entity, often shunning the help of others. And while this may have made him a fearsome opponent in one-on-one -on -one combat, it also made him vulnerable to ambushes and surprise attacks. After all, even a ninja needs backup sometimes. And if you thought Shadow Strike's ninja skills were impressive, just wait until you hear about his powers. While he may not have any supernatural abilities, his greatest strength lies in his ability to blend in with his surroundings and become virtually invisible. So, if you ever find yourself facing off against Shadow Strike, just remember, he may be right in front of you, but he could also be hiding in plain sight. Skullbuster Ladies and gentlemen, meet Skullbuster the ultimate survivalist and the commander of the Range Vipers of Cobra. He's risen through the levels in the Range Vipers of Cobra by displaying an unmatched level of brutality. He's immersed himself into a life that a warrior of the wild lives, consuming any animal deemed worthy of hunting, and considers himself to be the superior apex predator. If you happen to be a scavenger like a jackal or a vulture, you should be wary of Skullbuster, as he's more likely to kill you than feed on your carrion. During the events of World War III, the G.I. Joe team pursued every Cobra operatives that they knew of, which included Skullbuster, who had taken up residence on an uninhabited island in Namibia. When Covergirl and Shipwreck arrived to capture him, 
Skull Buster chose to stage their deaths instead of outright killing them. He believed that their deaths would arouse too much suspicion and ruin his retired life. Unfortunately for Skull Buster, Shipwreck had brought along some scorpion venom, which eventually led to his capture and return to civilized land, a fate that he feared more than death. Skull Buster eventually found himself imprisoned at the coffin, the detention facility in Greenland that G.I. Joe had established to hold their incarcerated enemies. However, as the saying goes, a good villain is hard to keep down. He was eventually freed along with several other prisoners during an attack at the coffin, which was orchestrated by Tomax. Voltar Ah, Voltar, a mercenary commander who was just too good at his job for anyone's liking. It's not every day you see a guy who's so successful that even the people who hired him want him gone. But when you're as talented as Voltar, it's hard to stay under the radar. His success as a mercenary commander caught the eye of none other than Destro himself, and soon he found himself affiliated with the Iron Grenadiers as Destro's general. Talk about a promotion. Slash. Well, well, well. Look who we have here. It's Slash, a mercenary ginger with a penchant for double dow broadswords and a complete disregard for human life. After being shunned by his own clan for committing a laundry list of crimes, Slash found himself as a member of Cobra. His deadly skills and grace, like a mantis, make him a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield and his twin Dao broadswords are a sight to behold. He frequently teams up with Slice and forms a strike team of two people that strikes fear into the hearts of their enemies. Vapor Vapor is one skilled pilot who possesses an extraordinary ability to visualize data. As an operative in Cobra Command, he's established direct connections between his optic nerves and his plane's traveling computers, which allows him to perform feats that are nothing short of impressive. However, the drawback of Vapor's power is that he experiences severe headaches and vision problems after approximately 30 minutes of image processing. But when you're flying at top speeds and taking on G.I. Joe, who has the time for headaches? Vanguard Vanguard, or Sergeant Nick Bailey as he's known outside of Cobra, has a backstory that's both tragic and chilling. His parents told endlessly to provide for the two children they had, but that all changed when his brother died during the Black Hawk Down situation. It was a turning point for Vanguard, and it changed his view of the world in a radical way. It wasn't long before he caught the attention of the Cobra commander, who saw something in Vanguard that he could use to his advantage. And use him, he did. Vanguard quickly rose through the ranks of Cobra's plague troopers. Vector it's time to meet Vector, the Cobra Laser Viper who's so good at modifying his equipment that you could probably turn a toaster into a weapon of mass destruction. This guy has got skills. It's no wonder he caught the eye of Cobra's best played troopers. After all, when you can turn a target system into a weapon system of lasers suited for offense, you're clearly not your average soldier. And rumor has it that even Destro himself attempted to recruit Vector, or buy his tech to use in Mars. Now, that sure is some serious recognition. Velocity. The AVAC, with a personality as friendly as his jetpack, is speedy. Velocity of the Plague Troopers of Cobra rose up the levels and became one of the best pilots in Cobra, beaten only by Wild Weasel himself. His equipment consists of a jetpack system that is his own, which is perfect for getting in and out of sticky situations with ease. But what really sets Velocity apart is his sense of humor and likable personality. In a world where everyone seems to be out for themselves, He's the kind of guy you'd want to have a beer with, if he wasn't working for Cobra, that is. Hmm. His plague trooper buddies certainly appreciate his upbeat attitude and his willingness to crack a joke, even in the most dire of situations. Unfortunately, Velocity's luck ran out during the World War III storyline. When he attempted to flee moments before the last fight, he was gunned down and murdered on the orders of the guillotine. Viper, Viper, the code name that strikes fear into the hearts of G.I. Joe fans everywhere. This Cobra operative may have a name that's a play on an anaconda, an a-conda, but don't let that fool you. She's not to be trifled with. Her childhood was in the New Orleans swamps, and it's no wonder she ended up enlisting with the organization called Cobra. With her skills and her determination, she was a natural fit. The Rattler 4 WD's driver, Viper, showed her incredible skills in driving. This vehicle is a force to be reckoned with in its own right, but with Viper behind the wheel, it's practically unstoppable. Viper makes a brief appearance again when the G.I. Joe team began to hunt down every operative of Cobra, which they could get their hands on in the World War III storyline. Wild Weasel Wild Weasel is a seasoned pilot with a wealth of experience. He's been involved in various conflicts, which include the violent wars in Africa and South America. He possesses vast information on aircraft capable of close support that's difficult to match. His expertise covers a wide range from makeshift civilian aircraft to cutting-edge flying machines equipped with ECM pods and missiles guided by lasers. But what really sets Wild Weasel apart is his characteristic sibilance, which is the result of an injury to the mouth. Vance Wingfield 
Well, well, well. It seems like Vance Wingfield is quite the ambitious fellow. He wanted to kickstart World War III by detonating a nuclear weapon on the soil of Russia. Talk about aiming high. But alas, his plan was foiled by none other than the G.I. Joe team. And to make matters worse, he got shot by his own wife. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. But it seems like Vance's son Tyler didn't learn from his father's mistakes and tried spreading a deadly virus. Did he not get the memo that his father's plan didn't work out too well? But as expected, G.I. Joe came to the rescue once again, and Tyler was stopped in his tracks. And you guessed it, he too was shot by his mother. Looks like she's a real straight shooter. But wait, there's more. Vance Wingfield came back from the dead, or so we thought, and decided to wreak havoc once again, this time with the help of the technology of Mars in order to push satellites out of their orbit and crash them into cities of Earth. Talk about taking destruction to new heights. Sadly, a large number of poor civilians lost their lives in the process. But fear not, G.I. Joe was able to apprehend Vance before he could cause any more damage. Let's just hope he stays put this time. Grim Skull Grim Skull, the former Sand Viper who managed to claw his way to the top of the Plague Troopers through sheer determination and a willingness to do whatever it takes to get the job done. This guy is not to be underestimated. And let's talk about that mission he completed, bringing back an experimental mutagen after the lab techs escaped with their research and materials. That mustn't have been easy, but Grim Skull was up to the challenge, and he was willing to mutate his own men in order to get the job done. That sure is some serious dedication to the Cobra cause. Of course, his methods may not be for everyone. Mutating your own troops is a risky move, and it's not exactly a popular tactic. But you can't argue with results, and Grimskull's success in the field has been earned. Hannibal Ah, Hannibal, the clone of the famous Carthage general who fought Rome in the Second Punic War. This guy certainly has some big shoes to fill but he's more than up to the task. After all, he's a clone created by Dr. Mindbender, using the original Hannibal's DNA and aged a few years for good measure. But Hannibal isn't content to simply exist as a clone. Oh no, he's got bigger plans than that. He escaped his foster family to reunite the other Serpento. He escaped his foster family to reunite the other Serpento clones and served in the coil under the leadership of Serpento. He's willing to sacrifice his own men to win a battle, which just goes to show how dedicated he is to the cause of Cobra. And now, as a general in Cobra, Hannibal is more determined than ever to help the Cobra commander conquer the world. Darklon Darklon, the distant relative of the infamous clan of Destro and ruler of his very own land, Darklonia. This guy has got a serious pedigree when it comes to bad guys, and he's not afraid to show it. When Destro retired from the front line, Darklon briefly took the reins of the Iron Grenadiers and showed the world what he was made of. But as with all things in the world of G.I. Joe, things didn't go according to plan. Cobra Commander took his operations into Eastern Europe and released a missile that caused the destruction of Darklon's castle, which led many to believe that he'd perished in the blast. But as it turns out, Darklon is a survivor. He managed to escape the explosion and live to fight another day. At least until he was caught by the G.I. Joe team in a later comic issue. It's a tough world out there, even for someone with Darklon's pedigree. Decimator Ah, uh, Decimator, the tech-savvy driver of the Cobra Hammerhead vehicle. With a helmet that would make Tony Stark jealous, this guy has got some serious hand-eye coordination skills. His special headgear gives him a view of his enemies that's so good it's almost like they're sitting right next to him, but without the awkward small talk. With Decimator on the battlefield, there's no need to worry about turning your head to keep an eye on the enemy. He's got a 180-degree view that puts even the most paranoid owl to shame. And forget about needing a flashlight, this guy has got night vision that would make Batman envious. Dice. Dice, the Cobra Ninja, who's often seen working alongside his fellow ninja, Slice. This guy is the real deal when it comes to martial arts and stealth, and he's not afraid to use his skills to take down his enemies. In the Marvel Comics G.I. Joe series, Dice is summoned to Destro's castle in Transcarpathia, where he becomes involved with the Red Ninja clan. Along with Slice, he becomes mentally affected by the Ninja Firefly and works to free him from a predicament on Cobra Island. But Dice's allegiance to Cobra doesn't mean he's without his own agenda. In issue number 138, he works with various Cobra operatives, which includes Dr. Biggles Jones, to hunt down suspected traitors Destro and the Baroness. Of course, they manage to escape, but it's clear that Dice is willing to do whatever it takes to ensure Cobra's success. Munitia Munitia sounds like one tough cookie, and it's no wonder that anyone who gets close to her gets a chill down their spine. She's a female mercenary who clearly knows how to hold her own, 
and it seems like she's often found in the company of some other characters, Blackout and Firefly, as a member of the His Team, hierarchy of infiltration, stealth and sabotage. It's also worth noting that Munitia was released as an action figure in 2009, which is a testament to how popular and well-known she's become within the G.I. Joe community. And in G.I. Joe America's Elite, she served as a member of the Elite Plague Troopers, which only further cements her status as a skilled and respected fighter. It'll be interesting to see what kind of challenges and battles Munitia faces in the future, and how she continues to evolve as a character within the G.I. Joe universe. But one thing is for sure, huh, she's not someone you want to mess with. Neurotoxin Neurotoxin, the leader of the Cobra San Scorpion forces, certainly sounds like a powerful foe. I mean, having your DNA combined with that of a scorpion is no small feat, and it's no wonder that he was handpicked from the Cobra Sand Vipers. It's interesting to see how Cobra is constantly experimenting and pushing the boundaries of what's possible to create more powerful and effective warriors like Neurotoxin. But of course, the G.I. Joe team is always ready to take on any challenge, and it seems like they were able to capture him in Special Missions Manhattan. However, it looks like Neurotoxin wasn't down for the count just yet, as he later escaped from prison and battled the Joes once again in Mexico. It's clear that he's a determined and skilled fighter, and not one to be taken lightly. Hotwire It's time to meet Hotwire, Cobra scientist with a passion for robotics. This guy may have intended to break with family tradition and avoid being labelled a mad scientist, but it seems that old habits die hard. After all, he was kicked out of school for his cybernetic experiments, and now he's working for Cobra to optimize their battle android troopers. Talk about a fall from grace, but let's not judge Hotwire too harshly. After all, he sees himself as a pure scientist, and he's completely oblivious to his own insanity. It's almost endearing in a way. Here's a guy who's so focused on his work that he can't even see his own madness. Decision. Well, 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 if it isn't Incision, a former leader of the Night Creepers turned Plague Trooper. This highly skilled and arrogant assassin certainly knows how to make a name for himself, even if it means betraying his former comrades for a little bit of cash and protection. Talk about loyalty. Am I right? Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and in America's Elite issue number 35, Storm Shadow puts an end to Incision's reign of terror in the Amazon. It seems that even the most skilled assassin is no match for the deadly ninja skills of the Arashikagi clan. Rest in peace, Incision. Your arrogance and skill will be missed, even if your loyalty leaves something to be desired. May you find some measure of redemption in the afterlife, or at least a better paycheck. Mistress Armada Mistress Armada, the former British Army member turned Iron Grenadier with a name as bold as her actions. Lillian Osborne may have shared her old identity, but she's certainly not one to be forgotten. After all, who could forget a character who joins the enemy after a friendly chat with Alexander McCullen? Talk about being easily swayed. But let's not judge Mistress Armada too harshly. Perhaps she just has a soft spot for charming villains. Or maybe she realized that the Iron Grenadiers have better uniforms and decided to switch teams for the fashion upgrade. Whatever the reason, she certainly made a name for herself in the G.I. Joe universe. And what a name it is! Mistress Armada sounds like the title of a swashbuckling romance novel. So, here's to Mistress Armada, the Iron Grenadier with a name as unforgettable as her loyalty is questionable. May she continue to sail the high seas of comic book glory and leave a trail of defeated Joes in her wake. Lieutenant Clay Moore Lieutenant Clayton W. Moore certainly has an interesting backstory, having been a former street gang member before joining up with the organization of Cobra. It seems like his leadership skills didn't go unnoticed, as he was able to rise through the ranks to be a garrison officer at the headquarters of Cobra. It's impressive that Lieutenant Clay Moore was able to prove himself to Cobra Commander by finding a traitor in their ranks. It's clear that he's not someone to be underestimated, and his loyalty to the Cobra Corps has clearly paid off. Being put in charge of the Cobra Shock Viper Corps is no small feat, and it's clear that Lieutenant Claymore has earned the trust and respect of his fellow Cobra soldiers. Repulsor Ah oh, yes, Frederick M. Townsend, or as he's known in the Cobra world, Repulsor. He sure has quite the title as Cobra's Toxo Viper Commander. It's a bit unsettling to think about what kind of damage Repulsor and the Toxo Vipers could potentially inflict. But I'm sure the G.I. Joe team is always ready to take on any challenge that comes their way. Roddy Piper Rowdy Roddy Piper, the Destro clan member and Iron Grenadiers trainer, modeled after the legendary professional wrestler Roddy Piper. As a trainer for the Iron Grenadiers, I bet he's an unstoppable force who's difficult to defeat. I mean, if the wrestler he's modeled after can handle the likes of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage in the ring, 
I'm sure he can whip the Grenadiers into shape in no time. And with a nickname like Rowdy, you know he's not one to mess with. I just hope he doesn't bust out any suplexes or body slams on the battlefield like the wrestler Roddy Piper. That might be a bit too much for the enemy to handle. Scalpel Well, 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 it seems we have another member of the Cobra Command with a medical degree. Meet Scalpel, the codename of Andrew R. Walker, a doctor who ended up joining the ranks of Cobra. Scalpel joined Cobra Command in the position of a Cobra medic, but there's more to Scalpel's story than just being a skilled doctor for Cobra. He also has a personal grudge against Sergeant Hacker, a member of the G.I. Joe team. The reason for his grudge is unknown, and Scalpel is not one to reveal his secrets easily. Scarface Aha! Uh -huh, Scarface, the Cobra officer that acted as a courier of Cobra Commander. Scarface's career path took a dark turn when he was turned into a biological time bomb by Dr. Venom as part of their G.I. Joe infection plan. Now, I'm no scientist, but I'm pretty sure that that is not a good thing. In fact, it's the kind of thing that might make you rethink your choice of employer. Unfortunately for Scarface, he didn't have a chance to update his resume before being trapped inside G.I. Joe's headquarters when it was destroyed by explosive charges. Guillotine Guillotine, the former Navy SEAL turned Cobra Eel, who felt that his old comrades were not ruthless enough. This guy certainly knows how to make a statement. And after defecting to Cobra, he quickly rose through the ranks thanks to his brutal tactics and unwavering commitment to the cause. It's no surprise then that Cobra Commander personally selected Guillotine to lead the elite plague troopers. This guy is the epitome of ruthless, and he's not afraid to do whatever it takes to achieve victory. He designed the plague training program and hand-selected the unit's members and ensured that they were all as ruthless as he was. Gallows Ah, Gallows, the former Saw Viper who made the jump to the elite plague troopers. When it comes to marksmanship, few can match Gallows. He's able to hit his targets with deadly precision, no matter how difficult the shot may be. And when he does run out of ammo, he's able to reload in the blink of an eye which makes him a great opponent on the battlefield. Cobra Mortal Cobra Mortal, the man, the myth, ha, the mercenary. This guy has been around the block a few times, serving Cobra in South and Central America before eventually cutting ties and going solo. But don't let his newfound independence fool you. He still functions as a field operative for the Cobra organization. Released as an action figure in 2006 as part of the Cobra's Most Wanted Mercenaries convention set, Cobra Mortal has since become a fan favorite and it's not hard to see why. This guy is the epitome of cool, calm, and collected. He's seen it all, and he's not afraid to use his experience to his advantage. When the Joes start hunting down every member of Cobra they can find during World War III, Cobra Mortal is one of the first on their list. Bayonet Bayonet, the Cobra Snow Serpent who's seen his fair share of battles. This guy is a true survivor, having survived injuries to his chest at the hands of the G.I. Joe team but he's not one to let a little thing like that slow him down. As part of Cobra's elite plague troopers, Bayonet, with his portable life support system, he's able to keep fighting even in the harshest of conditions. Steel Cobra Steel Cobra, or, or Cobra de Atho, as he's known in Portuguese, is a name that strikes fear into the hearts of even the bravest of souls. As one of Cobra Command's most feared operatives, he's earned his reputation as a master strategist and a forceful villain who can inflict significant damage. As the overseer of Cobra's Python patrol facility in the Brazilian Amazon, Steel Cobra has a lot on his plate, but he's not one to shy away from a challenge. In fact, he thrives on it. With his calculating mind and his strategic prowess, he's able to stay one step ahead of his enemies at all times. Sergeant Major Sergeant Major, the man with a name so impressive, you just know he means business. But it's not just his name that makes him a force to be reckoned with. As Destro's right-hand man on the Iron Grenadiers, he's got the skills to back it up. Alistair Thomas Duncan may not be a name that strikes fear into the hearts of his enemies, but when he's wearing that Iron Grenadier's uniform and wielding his weapons of choice, he's someone who deserves his title as a villain. Alexander McCullen Alexander McCullen, the long-lost son of the infamous Destro and a member of the Iron Grenadiers. This guy sure is a nefarious one, and he's not afraid to use his family name to his advantage. In the Devil's Due publishing continuity, Alexander posed as Destro when the real one was bedridden with an illness. Infrared Infrared A member of the elite Cobra Crimson Guard Immortal and a plague trooper to boot. This guy really knows how to work his way up the Cobra ladder. As a Crimson Guard Immortal, Infrared is one of the most highly trained and disciplined members of Cobra's forces. Marvelous Verdict 
In the expansive world of G.I. Joe, the Cobra organization stands as a fortress of evil, populated by a diverse array of villains driven by ambition, power, and an insidious desire for control. Each member of Cobra brings their unique set of skills, motivations, and dark pasts to the fore, shaping the universe of this iconic franchise. From the cunning intelligence of the Cobra Commander, to the menacing presence of Destro and the allure of the Baroness, the ranks of Cobra are filled with figures who command both fear and respect. In this ever-evolving landscape of heroes and villains, Cobra stands as a symbol of true evil, reminding us of the dangers in the shadows and the unwavering determination required to combat the forces of darkness. As the saga unfolds, the legacy of Cobra lives on, leaving a mark on the world of G.I. Joe and the imaginations of fans worldwide. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.